While I was in Thailand, I learned one thing. Training there is crazy, but let's start at the beginning. Five years ago, I quit traditional martial arts and began training combat sports. I traveled the world to train with some of the best coaches and fighters around, and every time I met these guys, I was impressed by how good they were, and I always thought, damn, these guys are beasts. I wondered if one day I would be able to turn into a beast myself, yet the odds seemed to be stacked against me. I trained peaceful martial arts, did yoga, and meditation for most of my life, and it didn't seem that being a quote-unquote beast came naturally to me. Also, many people around me kept telling me that you're either a fighter or you're not, and that being a beast is something that you're born with. But whether this is true or not, I just had to find out by myself. And what better way there is to do that than to train with other legit beasts? So in order to find out what I'm made of, I decided to go where there is no shortage of quote-unquote beasts. I went to Thailand where being a fighter is part of the culture. I mean, what other country has thousands of children starting to train combat sports from as early as they can, kicking banana trees to shreds and going to see fights almost daily as a fun activity? And to make things even more intense, of all the places to go, I chose one of the most famous Muay Thai gyms in the world, Tiger Muay Thai in Phuket, where fighters from all over the globe come to train and hone their skills. Now, I knew that there will be no shortage of beasts here, but the extent to how many there were surpassed even my highest expectations. The whole street on which Tiger Muay Thai was found seemed like one big fighting facility. Everywhere I turned, there was either a CrossFit gym, a Muay Thai school, a fighter's gear shop, or a protein shake bar. And this went on for miles. I mean, heck, even the hotel I was staying at was called the Muay Thai House and was filled with Muay Thai pictures and accessories. And the streets were filled not only with fighting-related buildings and facilities, they were also filled with fighters. It almost seemed like there was a how buff you need to be in order to enter this street law. As on every corner, all I saw were badass looking buff fighter guys and women. By the way, I didn't film the buff people in the street, so I have to make do with stock footage of some sporty people. Eventually, once I settled in, it was time to go to Tiger Muay Thai and experience the legendary place myself. At first, I was sent to the beginner's area, where a coach came by next to me and asked me to punch. After that, he asked me to kick. He then waved his hands and said, what are you doing here at the beginner's area? Go to the intermediate area. You see, the way Tiger Muay Thai is structured, there are many different areas for different levels and purposes. If you are deemed experienced enough, you are sent to the next area. Kinda just like in a video game. Needless to say, I was glad to be sent to the experienced area, but that also meant more intensive training and more intensive training partners. But I was here to train with the beasts, and I was ready to face the music. And there was no shortage of music to face. The intermediate class that I joined went on for two hours with almost no breaks whatsoever. Not only did we do countless amounts of striking the mitts and the heavy bag, we also did five rounds of sparring and then endurance training upon endurance training upon endurance training. And to make things even more fun, it was 30 degrees Celsius outside to help us break out of sweat. Eventually, after two hours of hard work, I called it a day, got a protein shake at the protein shake bar on the other side of the street and went to rest to have even more fun the following day. As day two of my martial arts journey in Tiger Muay Thai started, I decided to take up a private class, where for about an hour a local Thai coach did not go easy on me. For the entire session, he kept asking me to hit the mitts until I barely could, and then he asked me to do it again. To make things even more fun, we finished the intense hour with some endurance training and then hitting my abs with mitts until my stomach was even redder than before from all the heat and sweat. Then, since I made the mistake of overtraining way too many times in the past, I decided to take the rest of the day off to recover and the following day came back to another 2 hour long intermediate Muay Thai class. Yet, as I was training with the intermediate guys, something occurred to me. One thing I love about martial arts is understanding how they work, getting familiar with the why behind the moves and digging deeper into the strategy behind fighting. Yet during my first free classes in Tiger Muay Thai, I was asked to punch and kick a lot and to do a lot of endurance training, but I wasn't told much about why we did what. In fact, there was very little explaining and a lot of doing, which I later learned is the traditional way how Thai coaches and fighters teach and train. And that's great, but it wasn't entirely what I was looking for. 
anymore. And that's when during my third Muay Thai class, I noticed something fascinating happening on the other side of the facility in the advanced area of Tiger Muay Thai. There were two Western coaches teaching a bunch of beasts. I later found out that one of these coaches was Rafael Fizia, the currently ranked number 10 UFC light heavyweight fighter who is going quickly up through the ranks. The other coach was Matthew Semper, professional Muay Thai fighter with over 70 fights experience and of which more than 40 he won with a KO. I heard Rafael and Matt explaining every move they showed in detail and that's when I realized that I just had to get to train with them. So the next day, I came to the advanced training area just before the class started and asked Matthew if I can join. After learning that I've been training for some time now and that I had an amateur fight already before, he agreed to let me join and I was not disappointed with the training. The level of the coaching and the details the group was given by both coaches were amazing. It was exactly what I was looking for. So right after the class, I asked Matt if I can join the classes again tomorrow and if he would be available to give me a private class after that. Luckily he said yes to both requests, and yet again, I was not disappointed, as Matthew gave me one of the best private classes I ever received, packed not only with a lot of how, but also with a lot of why. But then, at the very end of my stay, something else very important happened that changed the course of my martial arts journey. After the second advanced class finished, a fighter from the intermediate group who I sparred with the other day came up to me. He told me that he was impressed with how well I sparred with him, and then, as I least expected it, he said to me, man, you're a beast. And then it occurred to me, I've been training so long and so hard with so many different beasts that even without realizing it, in the eyes of some other people, I have become one myself. If you want to see my latest amateur MMA fight, click on this video right here. Thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you to own your journey.